G'day everyone, Badlander here with things to do in FNQ. Hey, today we're at Katana Wetlands. Uh, it's run by the Cairns Regional Council. It's plenty of access for people with wheelchairs, crutches, wheelie walkers, kids with bikes, anything. Uh, there's a lot of wildlife to see normally, uh, including snakes, monitors, the odd frogs, fish, and lots of assorted bird life. So come along, let's enjoy it, and we'll go from there. Now as you enter Katana Wetlands from the car park, you can, you're greeted with this great big wide path, about 2.7 metres wide, and it has an information board on the left hand side, which we'll go back to later. So it's quite easy access for people that may have disabilities or need some sort of mobility aid. About 60 to 80 metres in, you'll come across a crossroad. We go to the left here, and you will see that it identifies the bird life of Katana wetlands. It's quite informative. Some of them are migratory birds, so they only come seasonally. Um, but it tells you everything you need to know about it. There's a chart further on that actually highlights the seasons that they come in. It's a different site. And then we progress along to how Katana wetlands started from the cane farms, from when the land was donated and how it was worked by volunteers and the councils to come what it is today. And then we have a final environmental board that shows you how the wetlands work. Now to the right of this is the actual track identification thing. So we're going to do Jabro Lake, Kaku Lake and the western side of Kingfisher Lake. So we progress along the boardwalk of which there are many informative signs here that show you the wildlife, the flora. And about 60 to 80 meters on we come across the boardwalk which will take this time. It's about 400 meters extra but it's very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of wildlife you can see here from the fish to the eels to the frogs and many signs identifying what birds you may spot there. There's often quite big monitors up in the trees like as in goannas. So from here we progress out. It's about 300 meters and you have a slight incline but easily accessible with any sort of mobility aid. And then we progress out back onto the main track where we were. Now we'll turn left here and I'll go show you the one of the four barbecue and picnic areas around. You'll notice the um, clear grassland behind it, electric barbecue which is totally free and water fountains everywhere. And what a sight that is, hey. Then we walk down the track about 100 metres and we'll come across the first of the many hides or viewing platforms. In each one, they'll actually highlight what wildlife frequents that particular pond. Then we go out onto the jetty side. And depending what time of day there, you'll see lots of bird life, fish life. In my case, I saw lots of dragonflies and insects and fish. From there we hang down and we follow the pathway. Again, easily accessible. Cannot highlight that enough more informative signs. In this case, it's on the flora. And I even met a butterfly who didn't want to leave me alone. I think I had the camouflage fishing shirt on and he thought I was a, a flower or something. I'm not sure, but he seemed to hang around for quite a while. Anyhow, I left him alone and I progressed further. Then we, you'll often see little um, cutaway tracks there. And they often lead to a viewing platform, a hide or whatever. In this case, it was a hide. Uh, another chart with what bird life frequent that thing and if you're into photography it's a good um, spot in which you may capture that perfect shot of whatever bird you're trying to get. Further along there's a butterfly identification chart which I should have paid much more attention to when I saw the butterfly. Now this, if you're not from North Queensland, is a green ant nest. Now whatever you do, if you see leaves come together like that, do not touch them. Just leave them alone, walk on by, and you won't have any troubles. If you touch them, you may have some issues. 
So at the end of the Kingfisher Lake, you're either you can either go left or right. We're going right, and we're going onto the southern side of Kaku Lake. It's quite scenic. Uh, much there was a lot of bird life at the time, but for some reason the GoPro didn't pick it up. And plenty of viewing seats and chilling time. Now, I should mention all along this track, every two to three hundred meters, there's some sort of seat in which you can just chill, relax, and take it in. There was a little bird playing around here, but the GoPro didn't pick it up. From that, we progress up and we take the right hand track at the crossroad and we head to the western side of Kingfisher Lake to another bird hide. And this is where you'll find the seasonal chart of the birds. What months of the year they come, what season, everything like that. And it overlays into a beautiful scenic lagoon, or pond as they call it, uh, where you'll often see things. Again, it was just dragonflies and fish playing. So we progress on from there and heading back to the car park. And on the left hand side, you'll see a great big white cross. That is correct the local way to commemorate all the babies that were lost to SIDS. It's uh, normally kept very well. We've just had a lot of rain here and it's um, a nice place to go and see people commemorate their lost ones. As you can see, it's a great, great big open field here with a shaded seat. Uh, and we come to another barbecue area. There's another one to the left of this, which I didn't film. Again, electric, free has water, has everything. And then from that point on, we head back to the car park. Badlander here. We've come to the end of the walk. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, please like, subscribe and comment. And all comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Badlander out for this one. Bye.